You can easily remove post-it notes because their adhesive is not even. Sticky notes feature a plastic adhesive. It's spread out in blobs across that sticky part of the paper. When you slap a post-it onto a bulletin board, not all the blobs, that are technically called microcapsules, will actually touch the surface to keep the paper stuck there. You can easily unstick it. And then, when you want to reattach it to something else, those blobs of glue that are left unused will take over the role of the adhesive. Eventually, you'll use all the capsules of glue, or they'll simply get clogged with dirt. So, the note won't stick anymore. It's very satisfying to chew gum because it's made of rubber. Gum from before had an elastic texture because of something called chicle, a natural type of latex rubber. Now you can chew your bubble gum easily because it's made of synthetic rubber. Some of these are used in car tires too, while others are used in Elmer's glue because they mimic the effect of chicle. Office buildings are a bit taller during the night. When the employees are finished with work, they all go home. Tall office buildings get slightly taller. For example, a 1,300-foot tall skyscraper will shrink about 0.03 inches under the weight of 50,000 people inside, assuming they're all an average weight. You could actually heat your house with just 70 people. If you've ever been trapped in a small, crowded room, you know people give off body heat. So you'd need about 70 people in motion to warm up your home in the winter using just their body heat or maybe 140 people standing still. If you consider the house uses four electrical storage heaters and humans radiate approximately 100 to 200 watts of heat in normal conditions. Why does glass break so easily? It's because its atoms are not very tightly arranged. Unlike other solid material like metal, glass is made up of amorphous, which basically means structureless, loosely packed and randomly arranged atoms. These atoms can't rearrange themselves that quickly to retain a firm structure, so glass collapses and fragments shatter everywhere. Do you know why airplane passenger windows are mostly below eye level? Aircraft are way cheaper, stronger, and easier to build without windows, but they're there because many people like the view. Particularly about 100 years ago, when flights were often conducted at low altitudes. Also, if some passengers are feeling sick, looking out the window can help them reconnect their sense of balance, as their eyes are continually reporting what's going on around them. Windows in this position also help distribute the load around them more evenly. The floor of the cabin where people sit isn't all the way at the bottom of the aircraft, which is why windows end up being quite low compared to both the overall volume of the cabin itself and the eye level of the passengers sitting down. Water feels colder than air at the same temperature because it's denser. Because of that, your body loses heat 25 times faster while surrounded by water than it would if it was surrounded by air that was the same temperature. Since it's so dense, water has a high heat capacity, which means it takes a lot of heat to raise its temperature just a little bit. Water is good at both retaining heat and cold. That's why the ocean is way cooler than land, and at the same time, the hot soup stays hot for a long time. Water is also a pretty good conductor, which means it effectively transfers either heat or cold to the human body. Have you ever wondered why water cleans so well? It's because of its asymmetrical molecules. They are made of two hydrogen atoms stuck to a single oxygen atom, which means they're triangular. That's why they have a slightly different charge on their different sides, similar to a magnet. The oxygen end of the molecule is slightly negative, while the hydrogen is slightly positive. Because of this feature, water is great at sticking to other molecules. So, when you want to wash away dirt, water molecules will stick to the dirt. They'll pull it away from the surface the dirt was on, no matter what it is. This is why water has surface tension. It's capable of sticking to itself, too. House cats share some similarities with big wild cats, but one of the things that sets them apart is their vocalization. The majority of large cats, like tigers and lions, will roar loudly so everyone knows they're coming to defend their territory. But with house cats, most of the time, you'll just hear purrs and meows. That's because of the physiology of their throat and voice box, which helps create these feline vocalizations, so a cat can either roar or purr but no cat can do both. Bobcats, cougars, house cats, cheetahs, they purr. Purring is specific because a cat creates it when it breathes in and when it breathes out. Roaring has evolved in a particular lineage of big cats, which includes tigers, lions, 
jaguars, and leopards, except the snow leopard, who lost this ability. They are capable of roaring because of the bendy bones in their throat. Mammals have their voice box in the throat, where air passing by its structures produces sounds. The vocal cords in the hyoid bones are the two main parts of the larynx that create different vocalizations in cats. You probably also prefer the pulse setting on your blender. And why wouldn't you? It just works better. And that's because of turbulence. When a blender stops chopping up food and starts spinning it around in circles only, everything you put inside is spinning at the same rate. It's not really about blending ingredients together, but about something called laminar flow. That means all the layers of liquid are continuously moving in the same direction. When you use the pulse function, your blender adds turbulence. So the fruit chunks are not just rolling around the sides of the blender, but they are falling into the center, which is when it's easier to blend them. So you'd like to open your window during a warm spring or summer day. It's so nice to hear the birds singing, and even when you come back an hour later, you'll probably still hear them singing the same song. They're hard workers, and the males are most likely guarding their territory and trying to attract a female. And other animals have their own tactics. Some like to rub their scent everywhere, but birds use a song to send the message, hey, I'm letting everyone know, especially other males in the area, this is my space. So they'll continue singing the same song over and over again. During the winter, they will most likely sing fewer notes to each other, or just one note. They want to let others know that where they are is their space. Plus, they're trying to figure out if there's any food somewhere nearby. Why do cats like small spaces? First of all, they are solitary animals, which is why they always search for a safe hiding place to take a good nap. And if you see a cat curled in a tiny box, it was probably just trying to find a nice warm spot to sleep and avoid the cold floor. Cats prefer room temperatures to be about 57 degrees Fahrenheit. A bit cooler than this is comfortable for us. And if there isn't a convenient sunbeam to lie in, they will look for other solutions, like a cozy shoebox. Cats are pretty lazy. They can sleep up to 18 hours a day, most average between 10 and 13 hours on a daily basis. The majority of cats are most active during dawn and dusk. They're not the nocturnal animals that some of us think they are but a specific category called crepuscular animals, together with other creatures like hamsters, ferrets, and stray dogs. Over millions of years, cats have evolved to become low-light predators. Their eyesight is adapted for activities during twilight. And since that's when they're most active, they save their energy for dusk and dawn. Before they became domesticated, cats would have had to expend large amounts of energy at these times, finding, going after, and catching their prey. House cats no longer need to hunt before each meal, but their natural instincts still encourage them to conserve energy for twilight periods. Why are four-leaf clovers so rare? Similar to animals, plant genes are located in small packages of DNA in the nucleus of each cell. They're called chromosomes. Our chromosomes come in matched pairs, but clovers have four copies of every chromosome per cell. There's a gene responsible for four-leaf clovers, and it's recessive. That means this plant will create four leaves only if it has a four-leaf gene on all four chromosomes. And that's pretty rare. Also, some environmental conditions like soil activity and temperature can also affect whether the four leaves appear. Interestingly, these anomalies tend to happen in clusters. So if you find one, look around you, there might be more of them.